Hello to all the participants in rawfoodsupport.com. It has been brought to my attention by some of my colleagues that Hippocrates Health Institute's name has been mentioned in a controversial way. So I'm here to clarify fact versus fiction, imagination versus science. Number one, I challenged on our web about six weeks ago, anyone who is a professional teacher within the living and raw food community who believes that consuming large amounts of fruit can come here to Hippocrates and on our dime be tested to see which nutrients they lack or let's hope have in their body. Make time to come here when I'm in residence at Hippocrates. I'll assure you that you'll be tested, providing one thing, that we can then take that test and post it on this website, our website, and every raw and living food website with my scientific comments after that. I welcome you to do that. I'd like other so-called leaders who consume massive copious amounts of fruit to also take up my offer on this. I challenge you, those of you who don't think we do scientific work here at Hippocrates after 52 years, to take me up on that. Now on to the fact that we are doing scientific work. Our medical team, which includes an oncological doctor, an ER doctor, and experts in the field, along with my wife, who ran Europe's most famous center, and myself, who have directed Hippocrates Health Institute since 1980, we take pride in making sure we cover and check and help our guests in every single possible way. When people arrive here, we do blood tests. What type? Both dark field that shows microscopic intake of mutated cells, and we see what they're eating, as well as medical blood tests. We do that at the end of their stay, and we don't stop there. For the rest of their life for free, they send blood tests back from all the parts of the world that people come here to Hippocrates from. We hold their hand for decade after decade, collecting information, collecting data. I would call that science. I don't know who else they're listening would not call that science. From that work of decades, we've concluded scientifically, biologically, that when one takes fruit in, and it's a person obviously who has a disorder to begin with, be it a mutagen, cancers, or a microbial problem, bacterial or viral, that you see literally on microscopic format, those diseases cluttering around, those disorders cluttering around the sugar and sugar being taken up by them. Multiplication of cancer is also observed with these microscopes, which blow up 10,000 times the normal size of the cell. We also have observed this in different forms of disease. Many people who come here to Hippocrates have been diagnosed before they arrive. Of course, what we ask them to do is bring all their medical records so our medical doctors can review them. So we have very solid data on what they have. We see the difference when we've removed all of those fruit sugars from their body. The other thing is many of the people out there who are purported leaders try to confuse the average person listening. They try to tell you there's differences in sugar, glucose, dextrose, sucrose, fructose. They're all the same as far as the human body and its microbes and mutagens are concerned. Sugar is a fuel. And yes, it's true that healthy cells pick up myconutrients, but healthy cells also do not want to take up bad foods. Unhealthy cells do not, mutated cells, cancer cells, do not take up micronutrients across the board. The two things they love the most is they love proteins in excess, so proteins that haven't been digested, i.e. animal-based proteins, and sugars. They also love the fact if one eats large amounts of fat. A lot of people out there today eat half a jar of coconut oil, or some of you are still chopping up on pork chops. The fact of the matter is, in those environments, you reduce oxygen. Whenever you reduce oxygen, you welcome all forms of disorder. 
So to clarify once again, Paul Nissen attempted to do so. As a director of Hippocrates, sugar feeds every single form of disease known to man. And secondly, anyone that would like to challenge me in a debate on the internet about this subject, I'd be more than happy to welcome. Another statement that I just read today was that somebody said that we would have to stop eating not to feed cancer. Let's be clear. Certain foods have phytonutrients, phytochemicals in them. There has been billions of dollars of research on phytonutrients and the effect they have on preventing cancer and many, many other diseases. The fact of the matter is that particular foods do not contain phytochemicals and so do not have that bodybuilding propensity. And foods that are not really foods and don't nourish the body obviously can feed all forms of disorder. But phytonutrient rich foods will not give you cancer, they'll prevent cancer. They will not promote viruses, they will help to eliminate viruses. They will not give bacteria to you, they will help to prevent bacteria. All of us have microbes and even mutagens in our body. We must hold them at bay by eating whole foods that do not contain stimulants such as sugar in it and overeat and overconsume fats. Anyone who would ever suggest that the Hippocrates diet is high in fat obviously has never read anything I've ever written in all of the decades I've done this work or certainly have never visited Hippocrates. We have taught for 52 years now that people should be consuming less than 5% of their diet as fat. And the kind of fats that we would be suggesting would be fatty acids, not fats that your poor body has to struggle to break down to fatty acids. Sprouts, for instance, are a perfect example of getting those fats that will never put weight on your body, but will fuel every cell, energize every cell in the body. And in fact, sprouts are one of the main sources that we get that from. Small amounts of nuts and seeds are eaten, certainly after they're soaked and sprouted, but that's not the staple food where sprouts are. So again, it's 5% of the Hippocrates diet is fat. We don't need to go back to these old-fashioned, antiquated caloric values to talk about where are we getting caloric values. Here we get caloric value, muscle building, body building values from eating sprouted grains that turn into plants, not something that is a powdered substance that has yeast and sugar placed in it that we call bread or cake, but the whole food plant form of grains. Grains, by the way, were the very first grass and life form that was grown on soil. Just before that were sea vegetables, the second life form. The first life form were blue-green algae in fresh water and salt water. So please don't take information and mutate it and change it to your own liking. If you want to know fact, go to the people that you're challenging. I'm giving you the facts. The protein on this diet is approximately 5%, completely digestible protein, or in great part, digestible protein. Where do we get that from? We get it from sprouts. We get it from consuming algae, both sea algae and freshwater algae. And of course, many vegetables in and of themselves have large amounts of protein in it. Something many people do not know, spinach has 19%. Sadly, the spinach most of you are eating has little to none in it, has little to no vitamins in it, because you're eating it weeks after it's been picked. Now, if you collect spinach from your own garden, wash it and eat it, you're getting 19% protein. But let me tell you, you'll get 25% or more by taking a sunflower green sprout, which is pre-digested protein already broken to amino acids saturating the bloodstream of even the person with the most horrific digestive tract within 15 to 30 minutes. Why this program is so effective for low and high blood sugar conditions, those people recovering from overeating fruit, is because it regulates protein. It doesn't perpetuate your addiction, it prevents that addiction and takes you away from that cycle of insanity, as we call it.